Hi, Cliff Brake from Beck Systems. This is a demo of NVIM Lua Kickstart. This is a starter template for NeoVim, which has a lot of nice stuff in. It's well integrated and gets you well down the path of using language servers and some of the more advanced plugins for available for NeoVim. So this is the repository and it's uh, fairly easy to install. It's uh, fairly small. It's a single file, init.lua. And once you have this set up, we'll start Vim. And it comes with a plugin called Mason. And Mason has a list of useful plugins that you probably, as many of the ones that you'll probably want to use. And the ones I have installed are, are listed here. So I have plugins for Elm, Go, uh, Java type, JavaScript, TypeScript, and also shell programs. So let's open up a shell file. And notice if we make some changes and then save it, we'll see that it does reformatting. That's with a shell formatter. And also, if we make some changes, there's a linter that makes suggestions on how to write better shell code. So now let's look at a Go file. So th this also comes with Telescope, which is a fuzzy finder. So I'm going to bring up the fuzzy finder to find files. I just type the uh, leader key and then SF for search file. And maybe we'll try to find the uh, serial client. And again we have automatic formatting and automatic linting. So if we we do something like this it's not valid it'll it'll show that there's one error and and describe what the problem is right in line so that's handy because you don't have to go look somewhere else for your errors we can use telescope to show the diagnostics so this gives us a list of all the problems and we can scroll through them another thing we can do is as we're typing it will give us suggestions Maybe a better example would be to do something like type a function. So if we start typing format, and then these are all the functions available in the format package, and we can do print line, and again we can kind of see the, the help and the parameters for these different functions we might want to call. If we want to go to the definition of this function we can just type GD and that'll take us to the definition and we can we can all use also use control uh, close bracket and this is what used to be used in the old vim um, tag files so that that's handy because a lot of us find that a lot easier we can just do control bracket and then control T gets us back Another very useful thing is we can uh, look at references. So if we type GR for Go References, it will show us where all this config variable is used in our program. With language servers, it's handy to know if it's working or not. So you can type LSP info and it shows that there's three clients, three language servers attached to this buffer. Buffer. There's the null ls, which we'll use for formatting, and then there's a, a lint linter, and then this, the standard go language, go please, which is the go language server. So this is kind of neat. We have three different language servers running at the same time operating on this single buffer. There's also LSP log, 
which gives you more detailed information on your language server. And again, if you're having problems, this is useful to, to debug what's going on. Let's look at a few other file types. Let's try an Elm file. So this is the home page of the simple IoT front end. Again, we can easily go to definitions of anything. And we're just, just flying through things. And again, th this even takes us into the standard library or the packages we've installed this uh, this finder and if we type something that isn't valid it will again give us the, the problem right in line another thing that's hat that's really handy is there's uh, support for built-in refactoring so you can type um, there's a a language server feature for renaming so you can rename a variable and then it'll rename all the places that it's used. So another type of file I have support for is JavaScript. So this is this is a, an example of a big uh, React application. And you'll see some errors here and these are just formatting errors because these are um, I have prettier set up with the defaults, so it, it recommends a trailing comma on in arrays. But again, everything just works consistently. If I want to go see where height sensor is defined, I just do control close bracket. And I can just drill down uh, through this. Again, if I want to look at all the errors, I can do uh, leader space. SD, and then these are all the um, problems it found. Again, most of these are just formatting issues because I, I just upgraded my config and I haven't run a global um, update on the formatting for this project. So another plugin I added, this isn't part of Kickstart, is Vimtree. And this allows me to browse the, uh, the project. And sometimes it's nice to just be able to go through a, a tree view of things. Look at things. So that's NVIM tree. Another thing that comes with um, Kickstart is Vim Fugitive, which is a was which is Git integration into Vim. So typically you just type Git, and then it shows you things that have been changed. You can you can stage them, unstage them, and then once things are staged, you typically type Git commit. Uh, let's go ahead and stage that Git commit. You can enter a commit comment. And do git push and and other things. Another really nice feature of git fugitive is you can do a an inline blame. So if I do git blame, now the blame um, or git git intentions. This is actually just right in line with my code. So these are actually two different windows. And here's my original code, and I can just keep editing editing things like that. And then when I'm when I'm done with this, I can just close that window. One thing that isn't integrated um, right out of the box with Kickstart is code formatters, which are very important to my workflow. So for those, I use um, null ls and I'll just show you where that comes from. So this is the project and there's currently an issue open.
So the format on save, I'm not seeing it right offhand. Anyway, I'll, I'll try to in include a, a link in the in the comments here. But if we, uh, I'll just show you what I did in my config. So you have to add a block of code that's something like this with um, with null ls. You add in the formatters you want and the diagnostics. So you can see I'm adding formatting for prettier, go imports, elm format, shell format, and then diagnostics for shell check. And then this code here ad adds these these checks and things before when you um, right, be right before you save it. So that's NeoVim Kickstart. It's really helped me get a much nicer user experience in my editor. I like that things are consistent between all the different languages and the fact that I can open up about any language that I'm currently working in in one place is is really really nice and it's really fast too these plugins that are written in Lua are just really fast and it, it keeps keeps the uh, vim experience where where it just feels snappy and and there's no delay pretty much to anything you do thanks